Okay, so welcome everyone uh, to this virtual open house for the African School of Economics. So I will begin with a brief introduction of ASC. ASC is a first rate at African university which aims to promote cutting edge economic research and innovative public policy and to contribute to the emergence of world-class social scientists and businesses in Africa. Since its inception in 2014, ASC has had tremendous success in giving young Africans access to the highest standards of education. And it is committed to creating equal opportunity access, especially for indigenous African talent. ASE has campuses in Benin Republic, Cote d'Ivoire, and more recently, Nigeria. And it has a joint master's degree offering in New York in the United States of America. ASE has an international faculty of global caliber and more than 16 partner institutions across the world. It has placed over 30 scholars in top global PhD programs in institutions such as Princeton, New York University, and Penn State. And its alumni have proceeded to prominent roles in government, private sector, and in international organizations such as the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United States. So very quickly, I am going to throw the floor to Professor Leonard Wanchikon to speak to us about ASE's PhD, Masters and Career Placements and Statistics that measure the school's success, which it has achieved in a very short period of time. Uh, Professor Leonard is the James Madison Professor of Political Economy at Princeton University and the founder of the African School of Economics. So Professor Leonard, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Obi. Um, so I'm going to speak uh, very briefly and then translate my key points um, in French uh, because we have a very large uh, French speaking audience based in Benin. Um, I, yesterday, I, was, uh, I had a conversation with uh, a professor from UCLA. And he basically told me bluntly that there is no institution, um, whether it's in Latin America, Africa, or even Asia, like ASE, that it's very unique in its goal it's the accomplishment. Um, like last week, we have a student uh, from ASC who uh, defended his PhD at the University of Montreal. And now uh, he'll be taking a position as a researcher at the International Monetary Fund. In, his name is um, Gislain Afavi. We also have a former student uh, who will be defending his dissertation, his PhD at uh, Princeton University in um, about three weeks. And he will be speaking later today. He will be taking a position as an assistant professor at um, New York University, one of the top university in the world. And uh, very soon we are going to have uh, many uh, female students, you know, uh, you will see one of them to, today, uh, Christelle and Yabo and others who will also defend their PhD and I'm pretty certain will have similar uh, placement. Um, besides, you know, the academic placement, I'm very proud to report, for instance, that um, some of our former students are working um, as for in government, like uh, the most prominent is uh, Mr. Balewa, who was the trade advisor of president of Togo. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, about two years ago. And but his accomplishment was nothing short of extraordinary, really, really amazing. So 
uh, you would be hard pressed to find an institution which in five years have done what we have done, you know? And I'm not surprised that many major um, uh, magazines and podcasts, radio, TV program have devoted a lot of space and time to cover the story of the African slope economics. And um, how, why we, you know, how, how did we make it, we make this possible? Well, I, I mean, in, you know, to be modest, I try to build, I try to build African School of Economics in my own image. So for instance, for those who know my, 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 my research, uh, I started off in mathematics and I do research in political science, sociology and economics. And more recently I'm becoming more of, I mean, not more, I mean, becoming uh, a historian as well. So I believe that the richness and of Africa, it's something that you cannot capture if you are not well-trained, if you are not, you know, well-trained in statistics, economics, or statistics, mathematics, computer science, but you also have to be extremely curious. And I think if there is one thing that I can um, basically, one word that I can use to describe who I am is curiosity. You know, I'm always asking questions to myself, to others, because I think we, we live an extremely, we are, we are born and raised in an extremely uh, rich um, and fascinating uh, environment. And I'm always trying to figure out what makes us unique and what makes us different, what makes us similar to other places. So I'm always asking questions. And this is the kind of, kind of drive and quality that we try to instill. And then another thing is ambition, you know, and confidence. You know, I think um, this is what we, we, we try to instill in the student, you know, confidence, ambition, you know, and that's, it have, it have, we, we have done very well. And talking about ambition, um, you know, ASC, as you may have heard, is now becoming global. You know, we, we not only will have, uh, we, we have a number of campuses in Africa. Um, you know, we are going to have a, a joint degree program in many African countries so that we can have a pipeline of students coming from, you know, the majority of African countries, you know, even if it's not a 100% ASC run campus, we are going to, um, we are going to uh, draw students um, from public university that have program that we, we run together, you know, like what we are planning to do in South Africa, for instance, with Stellenbosch University. And then talking about global, so we, are, we have a program, a joint degree program in, um, uh, in Harlem. And one of the students uh, from that program will be here today, uh, will be speaking today is uh, Fatima Khan, who's from Pakistan. But we also have, we have students from, um, uh, from, uh, from Colombia, from Dominican Republic, and from the US who are part of this program. So when you talk about ASC, it's also an export good. We are exporting the expertise, exporting the, um, what makes uh, uh, ASC unique to the world, particularly to the developing world. So we are in negotiation to open um, a joint debris program with the Federal University of Bahia in Brazil you know, is a province in, or a state in Brazil that has 83% uh, black minority with strong, extremely strong uh, connections with, um, uh, with, with Africa, particularly with West Africa. So this is the vision, you know, where we are strongly based in Africa, uh, particularly in West Africa, but then we have campuses in New York, Harlem, 
and Brazil, for instance, you know. And this is where we are going. And as you can see, the sky um, is the limit. So, and I'm extremely fortunate um, to have a very strong, dedicated team of professors and staff, uh, you know, in Benin, now in Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire. I cannot thank them enough for their support and for their professionalism, but also very lucky to have the financial support for Princeton University in most of the activities that we are running. You know, we have a presence uh, at Princeton University. And, you know, as you can see, uh, even this link uh, is something that was produced. The link of the, the Zoom link that we have here is something that produced by Princeton University. So to say, to say a few uh, words in French, um, so j'ai dit que um, j'ai rencontré un collègue uh, avant-hier, ou du moins hier, un collègue uh, argentin. Il m'a dit qu'il n'y a rien comme l'ASE aujourd'hui. Um, qu'il y a quelque chose d'unique dans cette institution. Dit, parce que nous sommes, nous sommes complètement focalisés sur l'excellence en, en économie et en finance sur la capacité de produire des étudiants qui vont immédiatement être capables de faire le PhD et le doctorat. Il y a très peu de programmes qui ont ce, cette ambition et ce focus. Voilà. Um, et je dis qu'il a entièrement raison. Si vous, nous, si vous me donnez le nom d'une école qui arrive à en Afrique particulièrement, à avoir les résultats que nous avons en termes de placement de nos étudiants, là, il faut me le dire, parce que moi, je n'en connais pas. En termes de, de pourcentage d'étudiants du programme qu'on arrive à placer. Alors, j'ai dit qu'il n'y a pas longtemps, euh, il y a trois jours de cela, un de nos étudiants a défendu sa thèse et qui va travailler au Fonds monétaire international, nous avons un étudiant qui va défendre sa thèse bientôt, qui va être professeur aux États-Unis ici, à New York University. Vous allez l'entendre bientôt. J'ai parlé de Regretté Balewa, donc un de nos brillants étudiants, qui était le conseiller, le premier conseiller sur le commerce international du président Yadema. Et tous ces exemples-là. Et je dis que la raison pour laquelle on a eu ce succès, c'est parce que j'ai essayé de bâtir euh, l'école à, à ma propre image, sur le plan académique tout au moins. Et ce qui me caractérise personnellement, c'est l'ambition, c'est la curiosité. Ce qui me caractérise aussi, c'est le, le multidisciplinarisme. Donc, euh, je viens de participer, je viens de participer, je suis conseiller historique du film Woman King de Hollywood qui va sortir bientôt, en même temps que j'ai une formation de mathématicien et je suis économiste de formation et je publie euh, dans les journaux scientifiques. Voilà. Donc, cette, cette multidisciplinarité... Et cette curiosité, cette ambition, c'est ça que j'essaye d'inculquer au niveau des étudiants. Euh, en tout cas, que le programme que nous avons essaie d'inculquer aux étudiants. Et j'ai parlé aussi d'ambition en disant que maintenant, nous sommes une université globale. En dehors de notre présence sur le campus, euh, sur le continent africain, nous avons, euh, nous sommes, nous avons ouvert un campus à New, York, à, à New York. Il y a une étudiante de ce programme-là, euh, une pakistanaise d'origine, Fatima, qui va vous parler bientôt. Et nous sommes en train d'ouvrir euh, un programme aussi à Bahia, au Brésil. Nous avons déjà notre premier étudiant. Elle s'appelle Gabrielle Nascimento. Elle, elle, elle a pleuré lorsque je l'ai annoncé qu'elle est admise euh, et qu'elle va, elle va commencer le programme. Là. Parce qu'elle elle sait ce que ça veut dire, ce que nous offrons. Et elle est brésilienne. Voilà. Donc, euh, euh, nous, nous allons continuer sur cette lancée-là. Et puis voilà. Donc, euh, merci pour votre attention. Okay, um, merci beaucoup, uh, Professor Wendt. I'll leave it there. I, I don't have that much for French. Uh, thank <laughs> that's okay, much. that's okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. That was very insightful. And like you said, the sky is the limit. Uh, the possibilities for ASE are endless. So very quickly, I will move to the deans of campus. Like I mentioned earlier, ASE has three campuses in Africa. There is one in Cote d'Ivoire, there is one in Benin Republic, 
And more recently, there is one in Nigeria. And we are fortunate to have the three deans of campus here with us as panelists. So we will start with Bene Republic. And the dean there is Sam Agwe. Hello, Sam. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Sam, but there is a slight echo. Can we test the audio once more? The, the reverberation is a bit distracting. Okay, Sam, while you work out the um, audio on your end, let me go to Cote d'Ivoire, where we have Basiru Shitu. Hello, Basiru, can you hear me? Yeah, hello, Bina. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we I can. can. Yes, okay, I can. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, Basiru. So I have a few questions for you, Basiru. The very first is this. What programs are offered at ASC in Cote d'Ivoire? Thank you, Bina. At ASC Cote d'Ivoire, we offer two sets of programs. At the BSc level, we offer a BSc in mathematics, uh, economic and statistics. And the second BSc is uh, on, in quantitative finance. The third one is on in and, and data. Okay. And then the fourth one is a, a BA in business administration. Wonderful, wonderful. So and then, uh, before, please, okay, please go on. Yes. At the MSc level, we offer an MSc in Mathematics, Economic and Statistics, and then an MSc in Quantitative Finance, and an MA in Business Administration. Okay, um, thank you, Basiru. Um, so I was going to say that before I go on, I'd like for the participants, both virtually and the physical participants, to um, realize that you may, at the end of the panels, ask questions. So it would be good if, as the panelists speak, you can start to articulate your questions because there will be a Q&A at the end of each panel. And I would like to appeal also to the panelists and the speakers and participants asking questions as well to try to make your comments and questions as brief as possible so we can stay within the time allotted for this um, event. So very quickly, I will move to the next question for you, Basiru, and it is this. What are the different tracks offered in the master's and bachelor programs? Okay, so uh, in the BSc program, I mentioned the Four tracks. Let, let me. We have uh, math, econ, and stats. And the second track is uh, a three track data science, and the third one is business administration. Okay. What careers do ASE graduates pursue, and how are skills learned and knowledge acquired useful in pursuing their respective fields? All right, we, do, we start, uh, this is our second year. We don't have graduates yet, but as uh, we are registering, we have them write their letter of motivation. And most of them mention that they want to be uh, economists working at uh, international organization like World Bank, um, and also helping government to make informed decision. So most of them want to be uh, a data analyst, uh, a quantitative economist. And the, the training and the curriculum of ISC is well adapted to those, those uh, fields, those uh, jobs, and provide the student the skill necessary to well perform in those positions. Wonderful. So the last question is one that I think is very important to the participants from Cote d'Ivoire. Um, what sets ASC apart from other universities in Cote d'Ivoire? Very good. There are nine 
features of AIC program that set us apart. But let me just uh, highlight the, the first six for you guys. The first one is the, we have international campuses. Uh, no, no university, no higher education in Ivory Coast has that. The second one is uh, the exchange program with uh, other campuses. Yeah. And the third one is the Haspier program with City University of New York. No other university in, in Ivory Coast has that. The third one is the opportunity to transfer to U University of Ottawa in the, for the third and fourth year of our BSc. And then the last one is that students can have a professional, have the opportunity to have a professional experience during the third and fourth year of BSc because they can work on the various projects of uh, the various uh, ASC research institute. Remember that ASC have four research institutes which give students the opportunity to participate in, in research while they are still in school. Over. All right, thank you so much, uh, Basiru. Uh, Sam, I wonder if you are ready for us um, now. If you aren't, we can quickly go to Dr. Chukupanyapana. Hello, Sam, are you ready? Uh, you're muted, Sam. Um, you are muted. Can you hear me, Sam? Uh, Sam, I'm yes, but I am afraid that the audio is still suboptimal. There is reverberation, meaning that there is more than one. There is more than one microphone on your end. Um, but they are trying to talk to the public at the same time. Okay, that, that's, a lot, that's a lot better. Um, this is a lot better. So, um, hello again, Sam. So Sam Agwe, um, the, for the participants, Sam Agwe is the Dean of the Bene Campus of the African School of Economics. So Sam, we have a few questions for you. The very first is this, what programs do you offer at ASE Bene? In Benin, we have uh, the uh, undergraduate programs. We have four undergraduate programs. We have also four at the master level and then one PhD. At the uh, undergraduate level, we have uh, a bachelor in statistics and economics. We have another one in uh, 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 informatics and statistics. We have also in business administration, and then we have all the, the last one in accounting. And at the master level, we have an MBA, master in business administration. We have the MMES, master in economic and statistics. We have an MPA, master in public administration, and then MTS, master in development studies. And the economics, in uh, the, the PhD in economics, you have you know, many options. If you want, you could do uh, more theoretical things or more apply. So based on your thesis and so Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Sam. Merci. Um, Sam, can I make a request of you? Um, is it possible for you to respond in French as well? So when you give your response in English, can you briefly also translate to French? Because we have a number of French speaking participants. So could you answer that first question in, in French, please? Sure. And I will take the opportunity maybe to introduce uh, uh, the Jean Dacruz, who will present some program of uh, the bachelor program. So uh, to summarize, uh, to, to, to say what I say briefly in, in French, uh, we have all the all the programs que nous avons sur le campus de l'ASE Bénin. Nous avons le le programme de licence, quatre programmes de licence. Nous avons quatre programmes de master 
et nous avons un programme de PhD. Et donc, au niveau licence, nous avons euh, une licence en économie statistique, en statistique informatique, en management et finance, et en comptabilité finance. Management marketing, désolé. Et au niveau du master, nous avons euh, le master en euh, administration des affaires, MBA. Nous avons le master euh, en économie mathématique et statistique. Nous avons le master en euh, administration publique. Et nous avons le master en développement statistique. Nous avons un programme de doctorat aussi conjointement avec euh, des partenaires, que ce soit en Europe, aux États-Unis ou euh, en Afrique du Sud. Merci. Bon, um, so the second question. What are the different tracks offered in the master's and bachelor programs? Yeah, you somehow what I, I just said that the tracks are uh, basically in uh, mathematics, economic statistics, but we have also uh, more theoretical things like uh, uh, microeconomics, macroeconomics, econometrics. So. Donc, comme je disais, les spécialités au niveau des masters et même des licences euh, sont un peu continues. Donc, nous avons les spécialités en économétrie, en macroéconomie, même en politique publique. Donc, il n'y a pas d'avoir des spécialisations de, et surtout des sujets de recherche. De Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sam. So, what careers do ASE graduates pursue, and how are skills learned and the knowledge acquired useful in pursuing their respective fields? Uh, ASE is somehow special. Uh, you will come from many backgrounds and then uh, have a place. Is so it's an open community, <laughs> if you can say so. We even encourage uh, people coming from uh, not only scientists' field. So once they are in, you know, uh, they strongly and perfectly adapt when we add uh, our mathematics and economic uh, tools to them, and then it produces uh, unique. Students. Donc, euh, je disais que nous ne pouvons pas réduire les admissions ou bien les profils qui peuvent rentrer à l'ASE à juste des mathématiciens ou des économistes, parce que nous avons des étudiants qui viennent des sciences sociales, qui viennent de la sociologie, qui viennent de l'agriculture, de l'agroéconomie. Et une fois qu'ils sont admis, uh, on, on ressort des profils qui sont très, très intéressants et uniques sur le marché de l'emploi. Donc, nous avons pour permettre à des étudiants de faire cela des cours d'appui et des programmes de mentorat tout au long de l'année qui, qui sont ceux qui sont peut-être moins outillés en mathématiques à, à ajuster leur niveau, ceux qui sont moins outillés en économique à ajuster leur niveau. Donc, il y a, il y a des des appuis tout au long de l'année qui permettent aux étudiants de s'ajuster et, et de s'en sortir voyant. Merci. Right. So finally, um, what sets ASE apart from other universities in uh, ASE is, is unique. <laughs> it's unique. Uh, even if you compare private uh, universities and even public universities in Africa to ASC, very few will uh, do research. We have financial centers and we have you know, many professors attached on the campus recruits from 
some of the universities in the world. So you have lecturers from the US, from Canada, from top universities, and then one day it's a event. They, they give talk, uh, training to the students, and we have the proof. Once we have our students getting PhD programs, really uh, top PhD programs, they are doing very well, anyway, and then they even belong to the top of their programs. So the training are very good, uh, the research parts is very good. And even the fact that we are training African citizens to, to be able to do research on Africa, talking with passion, this I think is something unique. So it's even one of the reasons myself I joined here. Yes. So, uh, je disais que. Uh, Ce qui fait de l'ASE quelque chose d'unique, <coughs> d'abord, je ne veux pas comparer l'ASE juste aux universités au Bénin, en Côte d'Ivoire, des universités francophones, parce que la plupart des gens relèvent le côté anglophone de l'ASE, qui permet aux étudiants d'être sur le monde entier. Mais si je compare l'ASE à toutes les universités africaines, Il y a peu d'universités qui font de la recherche. Nous avons euh, 4 centres de recherche qui font de la recherche de niveau très élevé. Et nous avons même les professeurs qui interviennent à l'ASE sont recrutés des meilleures universités au monde, des universités canadiennes, américaines, européennes et partout, et qui donnent des formations de très bonne qualité aux étudiants et ce n'est pas que juste de dire parce que si nous suivons les étudiants qui sont de l'ASE et qui continuent au doctorat euh, dans les universités étrangères, dans les meilleures universités au monde, ces étudiants font partie des meilleurs de leur promotion et c'est quelque chose qui rend fier l'Afrique entière. Et pour finir, l'autre raison pour laquelle pour laquelle moi-même je joue particulièrement à l'ASE et que euh, la recherche ne peut se faire efficacement sur les problèmes africains que par les Africains qui vont maîtriser les meilleurs outils de, de recherche. Donc, vous allez voir un étudiant béninois qui va travailler sur Le, le, la fréquentation des, des, des restaurants, par exemple, la passion que l'étudiant met pour faire cette recherche n'est pas pareil qu'un étranger qui fait juste une collecte de données et qui euh, sort des résultats. Donc, euh, c'est quelque chose de magnifique. Merci. Et en right. maybe uh, uh, Obinan to join et to, to add, uh, more than uh, the uh, the regular programs we have, we have also certificates. We have certificates in impact evaluation. And then we have many, many, many uh, summer schools. And I, I, I'll take the opportunity to, to announce that from Monday, we have a summer school over two weeks with Amazon. Who, and this summer school is given by the Nobel Prize, Thomas Sargent, you know, to African students, ASE students. So we did, a, we, we are doing a lot of things, a lot of you know, top things that I think people need to know and join. Donc je disais, pour finir, que j'avais oublié de dire, au-delà de nos programmes eh, standards, qui sont les licences et les masters, nous avons aussi uh, des certificats qui se donnent. Donc, on a un certificat en évaluation des packs et on a des écoles d'été qui permettent vraiment de former uh, nos étudiants et les, 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 les gens de, de la place. Donc, nous avons à partir de lundi 
un autre euh, école d'été qui commence pour deux semaines, qui est financée et gérée par le groupe Amazon et qui donne cette formation de deux semaines sur le data science. C'est le prix Nobel Thomas Sargent qui donne ça aux étudiants de, de l'ASE. Donc, c'est pour dire que il euh, y a un certain nombre de choses qui se passent, des choses énormes, et que vous devrez euh, euh, ne pas manquer, vous devez prendre l'opportunité de joindre et profiter de tout ce que euh, l'ASE et par son fondateur, Léonard Wadjik, ont permis aux Africains de, de bénéficier. Merci. Thank you very much, Sam. It all sounds incredibly interesting. Um, so before I move to the next panelist uh, in Nigeria, um, let me remind participants that you can get your questions ready. Uh, the reason for this virtual open house is for you to learn as much as you would want to about ASC. So if you have questions uh, for any of the panelists on the basis of what they have said or any other issue, please get them ready. There will be a Q&A after the first panel. So I very quickly will move to Dr. Chukuka Onyakwena of ASC Nigeria. Dr. Onyakwena, can you hear us? Yes, Sabina, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here to talk about ASC um, um, Abuja campus. Wonderful. So, Wonderful. Unfortunately, Wonderful. my camera is not working, but I can speak here. Oh, no, that, that's fine, Dr. Onyakwena. So very quickly to the first question. What is the vision for ASC going forward with the new campus in Abuja set to be operational later this year? Yeah, so given the successes um, witnessed in um, Benin and Cote d'Ivoire, uh, a, a logical step was to open a campus in Africa's most populous and dynamic country, Nigeria. Um, my experience in Nigeria and you know, a lot of people know this, that Nigeria is a dire need of world-class education, uh, which ASC offers. Um, there is no such university that offers, um, you know, courses with the, with the type of rigor and depth that, um, that's very the field of economics that uh, ASC offers. So ASC will be filling a huge gap in the Nigerian university um, system. So we are really gearing up to meet the expectations. Wonderful, Dr. Nyekwena. Um, so on to the second question. How does ASC aim to implement its Pan-African curriculum, coursework, and research outreach with the new campus in Abuja? Right, so we will be replicating a lot of the already existing courses um, in Benin and Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, some of the lecturers that are already lecturing in Benin and Cote d'Ivoire that come from different countries uh, will be coming to Abuja to lecture most of the courses. The Abuja campus will be offering um, three masters. We'll start with three master's programs, the master's in uh, mathematics, statistics, and economics, as well as an MBA, and then master's in um, development um, studies. Uh, so we'll also be recruiting some lecturers locally from Nigeria here to cover some of the courses um, that will be particularly for the development um, studies. Wonderful. Uh, and finally, what are your plans for expanding and developing deep synergies with research think tanks and universities in Africa and beyond? Right. We, we already have a very strong partnership with a major think tank in Nigeria, CC. Um, um, ASC and CC are implementing a, a very huge um, project on education in Nigeria for the past three years. And there have been very um, strong synergies within, the, within um, both institutions. Uh, we're also expanding our networks to other think tanks, universities, and other knowledge-based organizations. Um, last week, we kick-started the CC ASC by monthly seminar, where we had senior economists and country economists from the World Bank present um, the Nigeria Development Update. Uh, we had participants from the academia, 
civil society and other think tanks. And there were very insightful discussions. We're also um, partnering with JPAL. Um, we'll be hosting the evaluating social programs course this month. Um, also, um, the Pan African um, Science Research Council. Uh, we also have a, a, an office in ASC, and there'll be you know synergies between the two organizations. So yes, we are already forming deep synergies with related organizations, think tanks, and uh, the ac academia in Nigeria. Thanks. Right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Onyekwana. Um, without further ado, I will move on to the next part on the agenda. Um, before this, um, for those of you who don't know, um, I would like to inform you that alongside Princeton University, ASC has recently signed an MOU with the African Union Development Agency New Partnership for Africa's Development, or DANEPAD, to necessarily develop a pipeline of researchers scholars and entrepreneurs who can drive collaborations and partnerships for Africa and Africa's development goals. And fortunately, we have amongst us Mrs. Pamela Gopal, who is the principal expert, communities of practice, and head of the Policy Bridge Think Tank, Policy Bridge Tank Initiative at the African Union Development Agency, or the NEPAD, um, in the Knowledge and Management Program Evaluation Directorate um, to talk to us about this partnership and what the, the vision is going forward for ASC and Order NEPAD. So hello, Pamela, can you hear us? Yes, thank you, Obi. And hello, everyone, and a very good day to you, Africa's fellow leaders. And I say this because the fact that you have joined proved that you have interest in the country that you love and most importantly, you are investing in yourself to be better qualified individuals. Um, around, all around Africa students who can afford quality education move abroad in search for this. And more and more Africa is being brain drained the African Union Development Agency has partnered with the African School of Economics because we understand that knowledge does not have color nor gender specific and accessibility to the same quality and affordable education is now made available to you. Why the African School of Economics? We know that African students when compared to the rest of the world we have the best minds. We realize that our students are looking elsewhere for what you think cannot be found in Africa. All around us, we hear so many negative stories about Africa. We know of extreme poverty, of our failed systems, the lack of you, our youth not being heard. However, your attendance and interest today demonstrates that you want to access cutting edge research, education, innovation, and technology by associating yourself with the African School of Economics. And through your support, the African Union Development Agency, we know that you are actioning the change you want to see and will be closer to having a voice. Traditionally, we know that masters and PhD researchers were in their 50s or 60s, close to retirement age. And the continent increasingly requires highly skilled young scientists and technical analysis, uh, analysts uh, as yourself to uh, pr provide homegrown responses to the continent's challenges. And therefore the governments will need to redouble their efforts to ensure that the growing demands by both private sector and public sector can be fooled by highly competent Africans. And therefore the African Union Development Agency will ensure that your learnings are transferred to this important job market without experiencing that brain drain that I speak about in the African continent. 
Therefore, your decision today on advancing your knowledge and understanding the problems of the 21st century contributes to lifting the blockages and resistance that cause failures of development policies. Uh, governing is a complex, complex task. And I know being in the development space for more than 15 years, I know that it requires the devotion of its best people. Therefore, the African Union Development Agency is working closely with the African School of Economics to ensure that research across the globe relates to local institutions and policymakers that you are currently representing or intend to represent in the future. The importance of learning to address the restrictions of development and understanding the research and economics of what needs to bring effective policy actions lies in the decision you make today as African intellectual human cap uh, capital. So what is it that we're trying to do? We are cultivating an environment in which international based researchers work with and support the students of the African School of Economics to develop the connections, relationships and skills required driven by your passion through knowledge sharing and peer learning for a sustainable and equitable education and skills revolution that focuses on development economics and research, which will be instrumental in lifting Africa out of poverty. Our partnership uh, signifies that uh, this is an African led and an African owned partnership to set a research agenda towards locally owned African research programs and incorporate continual policy dialogue with the, within the research design, implementation, and our dissemination processes. This approach addresses the previous disconnect between universities and development agencies and was meant to inform governments to influence policy such that research evidence that you provide ultimately by yourselves Africa's future leaders do get an opportunity to be heard and used to influence our policies. Therefore, you as future potential African uh, School of Economics students play a critical role in shaping Pan-African policy supported by research and entrepreneurs that can be driven by the ASE students. Your enrollment contributes most definitely to the evidence-based voices of African policy analysis and decisions and create a center of gravity to shift to an African focus. So therefore, Africa's development is your responsibility and we implore you today as an African not to turn your back on Africa. And I leave you with these words. I have heard that the students aspire to work at the World Bank and I assure you that we need to actually strengthen our own African entities and um, affiliations like the African Union Development Agency. You speak about being uh, data analysts and uh, uh, quantitative economists, and there are space within this African development uh, platform. Um, to, uh, and we look forward to receiving you as alumni and interns and young professionals into this development arena. With that, I thank you and thank you, Obi. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Pamela. This all sounds very, very exciting. There is every, every reason um, to enroll at the ASC because the opportunities are boundless. So finally, on this panel, I'm going to move to Aristide Johnson who is the Head of Admission and Recruitment at ASC Côte d'Ivoire. Hello, Aristide, can you hear me? Um, hey, how are you? Uh, Obi, I, uh, Obi, Obi? Yes, yes. Do yes, you sir. mind if I take one minute to summarize in French what uh, Pamela have said? Because I think- Oh, absolutely, Prof, please go ahead. Well, right. Donc, uh, je voulais uh, prendre l'opportunité pour dire quelques mots, uh, essayer de résumer. Je vais dire, il y a trois choses. La première chose, c'est que nous avons euh, à l'école, à l'ASE, un partenariat avec l'Union africaine 
l'Union africaine, particulièrement le NEPAD, l'Agence de développement de l'Union africaine. Alors, euh, ce partenariat va consister à d'abord travailler avec les gouvernements, et former des étudiants qui peuvent non seulement par la suite travailler dans leur propre gouvernement, mais peut-être aussi à l'Union africaine. Donc, il aura des opportunités de, euh, disons, de stage, euh, etc. Ça, c'est très important. Alors, et ce partenariat est tripartite, ASE, Union africaine et Princeton University. Alors, le deuxième point sur lequel elle a, elle a insisté, c'est le fait que euh, c'est important qu'il y ait en Afrique des centres de formation ou des universités du même calibre que ce qu'on a sur le plan international. Parce que ce n'est pas tout le monde qui a la capacité d'aller à l'étranger pour étudier. Et même lorsque les gens vont à l'étranger pour étudier, euh, la plupart d'en n'arrivent pas à retourner. Même, ce qui est clair, c'est que certains vont rester là où ils sont, mais c'est quand même important qu'il y ait une masse critique de gens conformes sur place en Afrique. Voilà. Et là, le troisième point sur lequel elle a insisté, c'est qu'elle vous implore, elle vous demande de vous inscrire et de contribuer au développement de l'Afrique parce que des institutions comme l'ASE sont vraiment des institutions, euh, disons, d'une importance capitale quoi, pour le développement du capital humain nécessaire pour le développement de l'Afrique. Ça, c'est les trois points sur lesquels elle a insisté euh, que je voudrais rapidement partager avec vous. Merci. Obi, you may be... Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Prof. So I will go back to Aristide. Aristide is here to talk to us about uh, the admissions process and academic environment at ASC, including research, mentorship, and co-curricular activities. Hello, Aristide. Yeah, hi, everyone. Yes. Yeah, so I'll ask the first question. Um, what are the placement rates for ASC graduates? Well, uh, ASC has been fortunate to start with the IREP, which uh, was the Institute uh, for Empirical uh, Studies, I think, for Empirical Economics. Uh, I can't even translate that, IREP. Um, actually, ASC started uh, with a master program, which gave us um, the opportunity to have graduates who are already in place in the workplace, okay? So what we have, the official statistic that we have for now is statistics for students who have a master degree. And over 90% of our students who have a master degree uh, have been placed in various institutions, okay, which is exceptional because um, I don't know that many universities which can boast that 90% of the graduates have a job, okay? Um, so um, that's what I have for statistics for now. Oh, that's great. Um, thank you. Um, so, what are the advantages of ASE programs over equivalent programs in North America, Europe, and the UK? Well, I have a tendency to tell parents during my presentation that there is the African School of Economics and the rest of the schools here in Ivory Coast. Um, I tend to also say that the African School of Economics does not compare itself to university in Europe uh, or North America. We tend to compare ourselves to the best universities in those countries. Um, and this is based on the strong curriculum that we have um, that uh, rivals uh, some of the best institutions in the world, uh, based on the quality of the teachers that we have, um, based on the opportunities that the school offers its students. Uh, so um, among all those things that we talked about today, so um, I would say that the African School of Economics, uh, especially in Ivory Coast, uh, I can't speak for Benin or Nigeria, but in Ivory Coast, has some of the best program 
uh, to offer. And I don't think that there's any other institution that can rival what we have to offer when we look at all the opportunities that uh, we have here in the African School of Economics. Great. So what are the research, mentorship, and extracurricular activities offered at ASC? Well, like Sam said previously, the African School of Economics has already four research institutes which is great for our student because what does it mean? It means that our student have the opportunity to work on research projects uh, starting in the third year, uh, which is also unique, okay? Um, ASC also has the advantage, like particularly in the case of Cote d'Ivoire, we had uh, the privilege to receive the executive director of EP IPA uh, where, a lot of the people who work at that institution are from the African School of Economics. And it has been established that we'll be developing some partnership uh, for research uh, with, uh, with that organization. And also that uh, our student will have uh, some internship in that organization. Also, one of the students who graduated from ASC who has a very uh, successful um, operation, uh, consulting operation in Congo has decided to set up an office in Cote d'Ivoire and contacted us for, to have some of our students to be interns at his uh, consulting firm. So um, where in Ivory Coast people after graduating from bachelor's degree or master's have a difficulty having finding an internship, our students start interning right out of second year of the third year, which is kind of rare for an institution. As far as mentors, um, like Sam also mentioned, um, one of the particular, uh, particular thing in the African School of Economics is, it's almost like a family where you have the student who advance coaching the less advanced student. You also have the, the, the faculty and staff, which is available almost at any time for the student. So internally, you have that type of mentorship going on, um, not to talk about possibly, um, you know, find an outside mentor. Great. So thank you very much, Aristide. I would like to thank all of the panelists who have spoken. Thank you for the insights that you have shared. And we are moving to the Q&A. I imagine that a lot of you participants have questions for some or all of the panelists. So I would urge you to raise your hand if you are online and would like to ask a question. In Cote d'Ivoire, I see a large room of participants, very eager faces, and I imagine that you have questions as well. So perhaps we can start with the physical audience over there in Cote d'Ivoire. So Sam, if you could have them come to you and ask their questions directly, that it, would it's be in wonderful. Benin. It's in Benin. I've been in Benin, in Benin. So um, if you could have them come to you, um, Basaru and ask their questions. That would be wonderful. Okay. Oui, 
Donc, ici, nous avons une stratégie. C'est que s'il n'y a pas de questions, nous allons quand même demander aux gens de nous dire peut-être ce qu'ils ont retenu de ce qui a été dit jusque-là. Vous permettez au bilan. Yeah, so Basaro, um, um, uh, we're having a little difficulty uh, making out the audio. Um, could you could you um, speak directly? If I understand correctly, someone asked a question because you're out of the camera view. Has someone asked a question already? No, there was no one, and he wanted to get one of them to to summarize the key point that he got out oh, of the meeting so far. I see. Yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead. Par rapport à cette expérience qu'il a vécue pour nos jeunes cet après-midi. Donc, on va l'écouter. Et je suis Léon. Je suis Léon Rosso. Et je t'ai venu pour prendre les je voudrais savoir, est-ce que et le marqueur se déroule du soir Il y a la cour du soir qui se déroule aussi. Durant ceux qui ont mieux intervenu, je n'ai pas entendu quelque part du soir. Je ne sais pas comment ça se passe. Merci. Merci. Ok, thank you very much. Um... So before the next person asks their question, could we take them one by one? Um, Sam, uh, Leonard or Aristide, um, if, if you heard and understood the question, I wonder if any of you can respond to it um, in, yeah, in English I mean, and in French. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, um, you were asking if there is um, evening courses or evening program. The answer is no for now. I mean, it's mostly, um, you know, we have impact evaluation program. We, but the courses are full-time intensive. Donc, je disais que il n'y a pas de cours du soir, à moins que ce soit le programme de d'évaluation d'impact qui est un certificat. Mais faut pas oublier, vous ne pouvez pas devenir un cadre du Fonds monétaire international en ne prenant pas des cours intenses, en apprenant par l'anglais, en ne faisant pas les maths, les statistiques. Donc nous, c'est pas, on, on a, enfin, as dit c'est vraiment, dit, si vous vous n'allez pas par exemple voyager pour aller étudier aux États-Unis, en France et dire allez faire des cours du soir. Vous n'allez pas aller en France et dire que vous allez faire des cours du soir. Donc Voyant ce que nous sommes, notre ambition, euh, il faut que ce soit dense et intense. Voilà, et c'est là où, là, là, où, là où on en est. Quoi. Donc, euh, mais par la suite, euh, peut-être euh, Monsieur euh, Samagé, le professeur comme Samagé va peut-être vous, vous donner plus de détails. I mean, overall, what I wanted to trans, 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 what, I, what, what should come out very clearly from all we have been talking about, we are very high level frontier 
you know, so you need 100, 200% commitment from the students, from the professors. We have no, we, we have to be very focused. That's why our program are by and large, not evening classes or, you know, weekend classes. We have this certificate for those who are really working, but overall it's intense and very focused program because we want to be at the international uh, level and standard. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Um, Basaru, before you give the microphone to the next um, participant to ask their question, I'd like to urge the online participants to raise their hands if they have questions as well. So Basaru, over to you. I don't are think, you there, Basaru? I, I don't think people are very active, but so we can get them to intervene, I mean, to talk later. Are we, uh, can we, are we now maybe moving to the students of the alumni panel so that give you opportunity to people to, to ask their question or to intervene if necessary? Sounds good. Okay, so we will move um, to the next panel, which is for alumni and current students. So we have with us Gaitan Chakunte Nandog, Christelle Zuzumbo, Fatima Khan, and Julio Arce. Um, so they are alumni of ASE, and they are here to speak to us about their ASE journey and how that has helped them onto the current successes that they are enjoying. So we will go first to Gaitan. Hello, Gaitan, can you hear me? I think Gaitan is joining shortly, so maybe... Um, okay, we can go to uh, Julio or Julio. Julio, I hope I got the pronunciation. Yeah, Hello, that's Julio. perfect. Hello. Okay, one, wonderful. So tell us your ASC story. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a very particular story. Um, especially, I, I'm, I come from Mexico. Um, I'm doing now my PhD uh, in political science at Harvard University. Uh, yeah, essentially, you know, I mean, I, I just wanted to to say a little bit about the uh, how I got into ASC and how, how I get to know to, to know the program and so on. And I think that it, it's very connected to one of the biggest strengths of the of ASC, and it's like its international reputation. So the first time I heard about ASC was at Stanford University, which as you, as you everyone knows, is one of the major um, high, uh, higher education institutions in the United States. And people there were already talking, and this is you know, more than five years ago, people were, were already talking about how African School of Economics looked as the premier institution to form um, students from Africa or people that, like me, that are interested in, in, in studying Africa um, and, and, to, and to form the, the most prepared professionals to, to, to join the, uh, to, to become the leaders of, of the continent or the leaders of, of thinking about uh, the situation in, from African countries in, in a wide variety of perspectives. Um, in general, I think if, if I, I don't want to mess up your your um, questions and uh, Obina, but I, I prepared sort of three points that I would like to highlight about um, African School of Economics that uh, I, they, are per, mm. they are very brief. Um, so uh, I, I just want to say, like my, my perspective is quite different from the perspective of Christelle and the perspective of Gata. Um, it's more similar to the perspective of Fatima, who is an international student like me. Um, so, I, but I can give an international perspective on that. And uh, I think, in, in terms of what's happening in, in Western countries, is there's a huge demand for diversity in institutions and organizations. But this demand is not often met by a, a supply of people that are well prepared to to fill the, these positions. And I think that's exactly where African School of Economics uh, bridges this gap. 
by, by giving a good training and a good education that is uh, recognized internationally uh, by students. I just want to say like very three, three brief points about um, the, the, the advantages of, of African School of Economics. The first one is that it gives a baseline training to do whatever you want afterwards. So on contrary of, you know, perhaps of what people think African students should be doing, should be studying at African School of Economics, uh, there's the opportunity to study microeconomics, macroeconomics, econometrics, uh, trade, international economics, whatever you want to study. And this baseline opens you to a, a wide range of both labor opportunities, but also uh, academic opportunities in the end. The second one, as I mentioned already by the, uh, motivated by the question of Abina, is that it has an international reputation. So the international reputation helps to, when everybody knows in the US and in Europe, African School of Economics. And this is an advantage because when you, when people see your CV that you come from here, from there, you know, this will immediately stand up and people will review it and will give you, will open you a lot of doors. And finally is that uh, it is a, uh, the a big advantage of this is that it is a huge support network at the end. So we are in constant contact, uh, the people that studied in Benin, like me, um, and we try to give feedback to each other on our, our prior work. Uh, we try to support each other uh, with the uh, feedback, with the uh, transmission of information and of opportunities that come around. So is is very often like now being in the US is very often that you know without coordinating we'll meet you'll meet another ASC student in a conference you meet another uh, ASC student in a summer school and and this is part and everybody's connected we know you know uh, uh, Gaetan is not here but I didn't meet Gaetan in Benin but we've met a couple of times uh, afterwards and he's like we've been like friends forever you know like we catch up we talk about our common interest is how, how everything is looking in a, in a professional sense and professional development, and we support each other. So I, I think those are like the big three points that I wanted to highlight. And then, um, you know, if, if you have other questions, Obi, or, or if students have an, or any other questions, um, I'll be happy to, to speak more afterwards. Thank you very much, Julia. That, that was a very robust um, uh, response. Um, I will move to Christelle. Hello, Christelle. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, uh, we can. So um, let's start with a brief description of your ASC journey, um, emphasis on brief, and then I will go to direct questions. Okay. Okay, so uh, my name is Christelle. I'm originally from Benin, and I am a former ASC student. <laughs> I did a uh, uh, my master in mathematics, economics, and statistics at ASC. I graduated in uh, 2018. And after that, I joined the pre-doctoral program at ASC, where I received a proper training to uh, prepare my uh, application for a PhD program. And I ended up getting an admission to do my PhD in economics at the Pennsylvania State University, uh, where I'm at, at um, at the moment. So I'm um, in my fourth year at, uh, in the PhD program. I'll be taking my comprehensive exam in a couple of weeks. Um, so I want to say like ASC uh, really offers me a wonderful opportunity to be where I'm at uh, at this time. And the program was uh, really research oriented and the syllabus like they were really similar to uh, my two years in a PhD program at uh, the Pennsylvania State University. So they're really similar to North American uh, programs. So uh, yeah, let me stop there. If you have like the direct question, we can get into those. So interest interestingly, you answered my direct question I was going to ask, which is how your co coursework at ASC prepared you to where you are now. So that similarity between the courses is an important point. Uh, Gaitan, hello. I see you are back with us. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi, Obina. I can hear yes. you. Yes. Uh, 
Great. So Gaitan, can you briefly tell us your ASC journey and where that has led you briefly? And then I, I will go to a direct question for you. Oh yeah. So I so first of all, I, I finished, I'm a I'm I'm a PhD, I'm still a PhD candidate at Princeton. So I'm almost at the end and I will start at uh, NYU in a few months as an assistant professor. So um, my name is Gaitan Chakunte Nando for those uh, who don't know me. And after my, my, my degree of, uh, my master's degree in Cameroon, I, I moved to ASC for a master in statistics, economics and, uh, and mathematics. So I spent two to Three, three years in, in Benin and it was a yeah it was a it was a great experience and and I learned so the so to cut it short so I learned how how I can be like an African and apply and, and like build a strong and competitive application and apply to top university in the in the in, in, in North America in general. And, and 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 what ASA taught me is it's 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 how to learn from the experience of of invitees, for example, people coming at a seminar to present, learn from them, learn from their background, and how to to use that in order to be to be let's say at a similar position. Yeah. So this is one of the main things that I learned at ASC, in addition to 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 the environment with like you working with students from from from, from different background and culture and you also interacting so like the, the the community environment right so the community environment also kind of like teach you how to be how to be how to like motivate you to to him to have a goal and 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 try to achieve it yeah so this is, this is the, yeah. Okay, Gatan, uh, tu peux répondre en français aussi, parce que je sais que tu parles français. No, 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 don't worry, I will, I will go in English. No, no, no uh, il y a, comme il y a, ouais. les gens au Bénin, c'est essentiellement des francophones. Donc, c'est bon que tu résumes ce que tu as dit, juste peut-être en, en quelques phrases, quoi, pour l'audience. Ah, ok, um, ok, so, I, uh, okay, j'ai, après mon, bon, ce que j'ai dit, c'est qu'après mon master au Cameroun, j'ai, j'ai fait deux ans à l'African School of Economics où j'ai appris comment, how, uh, comment avoir une, uh, un, un CV, quoi, donc, comment construire un CV et avoir une, une euh, et conçu une candidature pour postuler pas seulement dans les universités mais aussi dans les les jobs quoi donc l'exposition avec des personnes venant de l'extérieur en Afrique et aussi hors de l'Afrique ils ont des expériences dans la recherche des expériences dans les industries privées des expériences même dans les ministères même à l'intérieur du Bénin là il y a des personnes qui viennent à des séminaires avec des expériences vraiment diverses. So, ce que ESI m'a donc appris, c'est comment utiliser ces expériences-là, apprendre de, 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 ces, de, de ces personnes et, 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 et me construire et avoir une... Comment on dit ça? Et avoir, avoir un objectif, quoi. C'est ça. Avoir un objectif, oui. Donc, ambition peu. académique, quoi. Ça ouais, dit. avoir une ambition. Bon, pas seulement une ambition académique, parce que... Professionnel, aussi... professionnel et en bon. Professionnel en général, yes, that's right, that's right. That's right, yeah. OK, bon. OK, thank you very much, Gaetan. Yeah. And I... finally... Yeah. Prof, you did go... you want to say something? No, 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 we want to go to Fatima now, right? Yes, so finally we go to Fatima Khan, a very interesting name in our context. Hello, <laughs> Fatima. Hi, everyone. How are you guys? Okay, so very quickly, I will go back to each of you individually for questions, but very quickly, could you tell us your, your own ASC story? Um, so just a little bit about myself. I am a second year Hasbro student. 
And Hasper is basically a joint program between ASE and Hunter College in New York. Um, I am originally from Pakistan and I did my master's before at NYU in urban planning. Um, and then I worked for a little bit um, in the development sector with research think tanks. And I quickly realized that um, in order for me to do more impactful research and to further my career, I needed a PhD degree. And up till that point, my academic training was, was fairly qualitative. So uh, I started looking at programs and then the Hasper program really stood out because it has given me intensive quantitative training. It's very rigorous. We've been exposed to econometric methods, research methods, data analytics, and, and I, it's and especially mathematical training. And I think it's really helped me bridge the gap between um, my qualifications at that time and you know whatever uh, are the requirements of a reputable and a good PhD program. So um, yeah, in that way, Hasper has really, really helped me. And now it's going to be my second year and I'm looking forward to learn more. Wonderful. Uh, so we, yes, go ahead. Please. I'm just saying if, if a little bit about Hasper, we also have, um, in, like we have faculty from ASC and Hunter College, but we also have faculty coming in from Yale, Harvard, Princeton, all top schools. Um, they come in and teach us short modules for about six weeks. So we have access to incredible faculty, great resources, and we really learn through those modules and the seminars um, how to apply whatever we learn uh, in whatever we whatever theory we learn in our courses, and it's it's been a great learning experience with that. Great, great. Thank you, Fatima. So, uh, Christelle, uh, maybe, I'll come back to you. Maybe I could translate very yes, quickly. Well. Yeah. Okay, please. Donc, uh, Fatima, uh, Fatima Khan, qui est pakistanaise d'origine, um, elle, uh, elle est étudiante dans le programme conjoint que l'ASE a avec uh, Hunter College in New York. Elle avait déjà en fait un master dans l'université de New York, New York University. In public, uh, dans, dans les politiques publiques. Elle a travaillé dans le domaine du développement international au Pakistan. Et puis, elle a décidé que, voilà, elle a besoin d'aller au, au doctorat. Elle a cherché, elle a trouvé que la meilleure euh, option pour elle, c'était le programme de l'École africaine d'économie, African School of Economics, avec euh, Hunter College euh, à New York. Et elle est inscrite dans ce programme-là, elle a dit que ses attentes ont été comblées parce que non seulement on a des professeurs de l'ASE qui enseignent là, mais il y a également des professeurs de, de l'université de la ville de New York donc, euh, et en même temps des professeurs de la région de New York, des profs venant de Yale, venant de Columbia, euh, venant également de, euh, donc des, des universités environnantes. Et qu'elle est en deuxième année et qu'elle attend donc euh, très bientôt de postuler pour le, le doctorat, comme, comme, elle, comme, elle, comme, comme elle veut. Et je profite pour dire qu'en dehors d'elle, de Fatima qui est une pakistanaise, il y a aussi un Chinois de Hong Kong qui est dans le programme, un Américain, des Américains noirs, euh, quelqu'un, enfin, de, un étudiant de la Côte d'Ivoire, un une étudiante de l'Ouganda, en même temps que l'étudiant de la République dominicaine, et euh, de la Colombie, voilà. Donc, le programme de New York, c'est vraiment les Nations Unies, quoi, si vous voulez, voilà. Donc, euh, c'est ça. I, mean, I wanted to just translate very quickly um, her intervention. I thank you. All right, thank you very much, Prof. So, um, Christelle, I'll come back to you with a question. So, what research opportunities did you find where at ASC? Sorry, can you say that again? I didn't hear. Yes, what research opportunities did you find where at ASC in your time there? Okay, uh, so as I said before, the program was really research oriented. So we had this uh, opportunity of the, what, what we call the work, work study program, where we have opportunities of contributing or working on research projects of ASC. And at the same time that helped us be a uh, part of our tuition fees. So when I was at ASC, I got the chance when I was doing my master and also when I was doing the pre-doctoral program, I got the chance to contribute to those research projects. I work, for example, on the project for uh, 
it's called the Bastier uh, pro project that we work on. It was about uh, road construction in rural areas in Benin, and I work on that project. Um, so yeah, there was a couple of those uh, projects on which I got the opportunity of working as researcher uh, when I was at the ASC. Wonderful. Um, Julio, hi. So um, your question is, what did you enjoy most uh, in your time at ASC? Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I think that's a good question. Uh, thinking about, <laughs> I try to recall a lot of memories that, that, that I made there. I think in terms, I would say like, let's say academically, um, there were a lot of courses that were uh, of much of my interest. So I recall um, we had uh, visitors from some European universities to give the course on uh, African economic history. So, but, but these are not like, you know, uh, these, these were like some of the leading Africa historians that are, are out there. And it was a really, really productive and super interesting course that we had. Another academic experience that, that we had is that we had a couple of conferences in which people from uh, that were doing the top research in economics and the top research in political science uh, visited the, uh, the school in Benin. Uh, and there was a lot of opportunity for us to, to reach out to them, to talk about our ideas, um, to learn a little bit from them and be a um, so, some form of previous courses in the context of these conferences. Um, so that's in the, in the academic part. In the social part, definitely what I enjoy the most is um, meeting people from all around Africa because there, were, there was not only people from, from Benin and the neighboring countries, but there were people from Cameroon, people from, um, from even uh, Chad, uh, Burkina, some of, of other countries that if, 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 if it weren't for, for the African School of Economics, I wouldn't have been had the opportunity to, to meet. And this, again, as I said, these are people that I'm still in contact with and we share a lot of um, common feedback and common resources together. So, yeah. Great, thank you. So Gaitan, this is for you. So what skills and knowledge um, that you acquired at ASC uh, have helped you in your PhD at Princeton? Um, okay, that's a, that's a good question. Okay, the skill is um, before, first of all, before moving at ASC, I was, I didn't know much about economics, right? So I had like, <clears throat> I had a bachelor in mathematics, but I didn't really know what economics were. So then, so I, I, I see I took courses in economics and in statistics, and and I also learned how to to apply that in research, right? So I think I think I think that was that was the main one of the main uh, skill that I've learned to translate, like because taking classes is one thing, then using it in your research is another thing, and 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 I think the school actually taught me how to make that transition using all the the um, all these economic classes or take all these economic classes and look at the subject look at something in the in the environment and how to use all those classes to explain something that you 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 observe for example you can use data you can use game theory and then that's something and then that's 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 one of the main skills that I've 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 learned in the in the school. Yeah. Thank you very much. Can I trouble you to once more translate for our French participants? Sure, sure. I will do that. Sure. So j'ai donc dit que um, donc l'habitude qu'on prend souvent les classes, n'est-ce pas? Donc qu'on prend souvent les classes économie mathématiques. Il y a 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 une difficulté de transit pour pour transitionner des classes que tu prends à la recherche parce que beaucoup sont bons dans les cours ils ont les A+, les A+, B+, tout ça mais quand ils se menaient au niveau de la recherche il y a, il y a, il y a un blocus donc ce que l'école te permet avec les projets que vous avez vous avez travaillé avec les, les, les chercheurs à l'IREP 
vous collaborez avec les professeurs qui visitent l'école, vous participez au, au weekly seminar, au séminaire euh, hebdomadaire, vous participez à ces séminaires. Donc, ça vous permet de, de, de passer cette transition, d'utiliser les classes que vous prenez et avoir un projet de recherche et travailler dessus. Donc, c'est une des compétences euh, tellement et c'est crucial. C'est vraiment crucial si c'est que tu veux continuer à recherche, même si c'est que tu veux travailler dans le privé, comme dans un, un centre de recherche ou bien dans un projet de recherche quelque part en Afrique. Donc, cette compétence est vraiment, vraiment um, um, importante. Ouais. Thank you very much, Kaitan. And finally, Fatima. So, Fatima, the question for you is twofold. The, the first part of it is, how rigorous is the coursework um, at Hasper? And how holistically is the pre-doctoral program designed? And what are your future plans post-Hasper? Um, so uh, I'll have to give a little bit of background for that. I have a political, like politics and econ degree. And like I said, my, my master's was also qualitative. So I did not have a math background really. And I, I personally struggled um, a little bit to keep up with, with <laughs> the, the rigor in the program. It is extremely rigorous. It is daunting sometimes. But I think we have a group of people. We have, like the cohort is uh, very helpful. We rely on each other. It's a great resource. Uh, we have a lot of resources in terms of tutoring at Hunter. So it's been, it's been hard. It's a lot of effort. I sometimes have to put in like 150% effort to keep up with the coursework. But it's, I mean, I've, I've been doing well and it's, it's, it's been a great learning experience. And it's not that hard if you, really want to put in the work and you you can score well. Um, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's not also impossible. Uh, we've had uh, courses in game theory. We've had um, uh, techniques for economic analysis. We've had uh, linear and non-linear econometric methods, uh, micro econ, micro econ two, which is basically game theory and macro econ up to now. Um, and then next semester, and like I mentioned before, we also have modules where we um, learn a little bit, uh, like we deep dive into microeconomic theory, um, econometric theory, and macro econ. Uh, so the courses are hard, but it's it's doable. Um, like I said, there are a lot of resources available. And then um, in terms of how holistic and comprehensive the program is, the faculty at ASC and um, at Hunter have been super helpful. They have their doors open always. We can go in and have and talk to them about anything, whether it's whether it's like a uh, something that we're dealing with in New York, some non-academic issue or our research ideas, anything. It's it's very easy to reach out to them. Uh, we also have, in terms of like uh, academic training, we have uh, weekly seminars, sometimes bi-weekly seminars, where professors come in, they uh, present their research, and then Hasper students have uh, a one-hour session where we talk to the professors one-on-one. -on -one. We, we can ask them about their research, where we can discuss our ideas with them. And most importantly, we have been getting... Um, guidance from them on how to make our applications competitive for PhD programs. And these are all professors that are teaching at top PhD programs and some of them are on the admissions panel too. So it's been really constructive advice and it's, it's uh, been really helpful learning from them and getting all the guidance from them. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's uh, the cohort itself and then these extra things like the seminars really make it a a holistic uh, program, pre-doctoral program. And then I'm just looking forward to the next year where we will have uh, like our first semester is some coursework and then the second semester is all going to be research. And Thank I think you your second much. question was about my future plans. So uh, yes, your I, future plans. I think I might take a gap year. I'm not sure right now, but I will be working on my thesis during that time. Um, and I also plan to have a research internship or an RAship for that one year so I can build on the skills that I've learned and uh, just continue working. And then also at the same time, um, add more experience so I can get into a top program. Great. So thank you, Fatima. Um, 
Uh, Basaru, I wonder if there are any questions in the room uh, for the alumni and Fatima. We can take those very quickly before we move on to the closing remarks from Professor Lennon. Thank you. Ici, nous avons recensé quelques questions au niveau des participants pour transmettre afin que les différentes personnes en ligne puissent répondre à leurs préoccupations. En autre question, par exemple, il y a un étudiant, précisément en de Paris, qui demandait en quoi consiste la formation en informatique à la SE. Et est-ce qu'il existe, par exemple, une possibilité de pouvoir continuer en, en master lorsqu'on a fait la production de produits à l'AS? Également, il y a bon nombre d'étudiants qui sont présents qui ont demandé qu'est-ce qui est fait au niveau de la plupart sur la prémisse pour aider les postulants qui n'ont pas un bon niveau en anglais afin qu'ils puissent améliorer leur anglais vu que le plus grande partie de la formation se déroule en anglais. Au-delà de ça, il y a d'autres préoccupations sur lesquelles nous allons pouvoir revenir tout à l'heure, qui concernent notamment les programmes de formation, ce qui avait déjà été dit, ceux qui sont revenus un peu en retard, nous allons nous les rappeler avant de clôturer la formation en fait de la séance à notre Donc voilà un peu les différentes questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Professor Leonard, could we get some help with the translation if you got that, please? Yeah, so basically it's a question about um, the data science, computer science program. And is that possibility to go to do a master's after finishing the undergrad? Um, and then the, there is a question about uh, those who are not from an English speaking country, what do we do to prepare them um, for, you know, to be able to be very fluent in English. Um, and those are the two questions that I, that I, I noted. Est-ce que j'ai oublié quelque chose en dehors de ces deux questions-là? Uh, uh, Sam? C'est bon? Il y a une autre question? Pardon? C'est bon, oui, il y a des deux. OK. Bon, euh, je vais peut-être parler brièvement et, et Sam. Par rapport à la première question, euh, oui, euh, le programme de master's en mathématiques et économie statistique, c'est un programme assez vaste. Donc, si quelqu'un est intéressé par data science et par euh, computer science, il peut avoir son master sous, ce, euh, sous, sous cet éventail-là. Voilà. Donc, euh, c'est mieux pour votre carrière d'avoir un master qui est assez large, même si votre formation et votre thèse est plus étroite. Voilà. Donc, lorsque vous dites, par exemple, que vous avez fait un master en mathématiques et économie et statistique, et que vous avez fait, là, vous pouvez travailler en informatique vous pouvez travailler en économie, vous pouvez travailler, euh, disons, au gouvernement, dans les, en plusieurs, avec un, avec un, un, un nombre plus varié d'options. Voilà. Donc, oui, la question, c'est oui. Il y a la possibilité de continuer dans le master en économie statistique et mathématique, mais mais tout en focalisant sur l'informatique. So my answer was that the answer is yes. Under the master's in mathematics, economic statistics, you can actually specialize in data science, computer science. You know, it is better that the master remain broad to you know, give you a um, lot of opportunities. Par rapport à la question sur l'anglais, on a des camps d'anglais avant. On a des professeurs d'anglais spécialisés. Euh, qui euh, font des cours, font des cours permanemment pour mettre à niveau. Mais euh, ce, qui est, ce qui permet aux étudiants de vite apprendre aussi, c'est que la, les cours sont en anglais, en partie, le matériel de cours est en anglais, en partie, 
et les étudiants pratiquent entre eux. Voilà. Donc, c'est une combinaison de cours intensifs avant la rentrée et euh, de, de formation permanente, quoi, pendant le cursus universitaire qui vous permet euh, d'arriver là. Voilà. Donc, c'est comment je peux répondre. Donc, vous n'avez pas d'inquiétude à avoir du tout. Oubliez il y a des, n'oubliez pas qu'il y a des gens, par exemple, qui quittent le Bénin et qui vont aller étudier en Chine. Ils quittent le Bénin, vont aller étudier en Russie. Voilà. Donc, c'est des gens qui n'ont jamais, même pas appris un mot du chinois ou du russe avant de voyager. À plus forte raison, vous qui aviez commencé à apprendre l'anglais depuis, euh, disons, la sixième. Donc, vous avez des, des notions qui vont, qui vont revenir très, très vite lorsque vous aurez commencé les cours. Voilà, donc c'est un peu la réponse que je peux donner. Donc, you'll be, you'll be just fine. We have intensive classes in English and there are, the curriculum allow you, allows you to actually keep learning English among yourselves, but also um, from our English, uh, our, our faculty. Right. All right, thank you, Prof. Um, before I go back to the room, in, in case there is another question there, I see we have a question from one of the online participants. We have Pas Al Gonon. Uh, you have a question, so please go ahead. Okay, thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Please okay. go ahead. So my question now is for Gaitan. When he was uh, answering your question, he said that one of the things that he learned from AFC is that he didn't have any background in economics. And then when he came to AFC, he learned a lot about economics and learned also how to apply all the knowledge in research. So my question now is, uh, did he happen to encounter any difficulties while working on a research topic? And if yes, what can he tell us? We, as a, his young brothers, we can learn from it and move on. Thank you very much. Gaitan, you have the floor. Yes, I will take that. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's always difficulties, right? So yeah, there's always difficulties and it's all about perseverance, right? So you just have to, yeah, stick to it, right? So you... You, 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 you choose a path and you keep going regardless of the hardships, regardless of how difficult it is. So I think that's what I, I learned as well. So I didn't know how to use Tata, for example. I didn't know how to use um, SPSS, so all this software. So I remember I would spend something like 10 to 12 hours at the library in IREP working on Tata only. So that's how you overcome these difficulties. So you just have to keep pushing, keep, you, you just have to keep trying, keep trying. And one day you will see how, how far you have come, right? So I think that's the only thing I'm, I, will, I'm, I'm, I will tell you. It's just about perseverance, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Great advice, Gaitan. So Basaru, I wonder if there's any other question in the room, we can take one more question before we go to the closing remarks. No, it's bon for the questions that we have received. Okay. Okay. Um, Professor Leonard, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, so we, we would like you to give the closing remarks before we close. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, first of all, it was uh, thanks all of you for coming and thanks all the panelists, um, the alumni uh, who have shared the uh, really amazing experience and insight. And, and, and it's so unique, you know, uh, to see that um, we have among the alumni students with mathematics background, students with statistics and economics background, you know, um, a girl and a boy, you know, <laughs> coming from two separate African countries. And they're all able to get into top PhD program in the US. And they are doing exceptionally, exceptionally well. 
it's also really, really great to have, you know, one student at African School of Economics coming from uh, Mexico and another coming from Pakistan and one studied in Benin and um, the other student studying in New York. They all have great things to say about, uh, about the school. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really, really encouraging. You know, um, you have no idea, you have no idea how important uh, it is uh, to be part of um, not only uh, a community of Africans, but also a community of young people from various continents um, who are all looking in the same direction, which is learning economics from faculty, learning economics and you know social science in general from each other, you know, and. Uh, Equally important is the presence of um, um, Mrs. Pamela Gopal from AU NEPAD. Um, it, it's really important because now with the partnership, we don't have to go bilaterally to African governments. You know, like for instance, we managed to talk to the government of Togo separately, and then Guinea separately, Morocco separately, um, you know, South Africa separately. We have, a, you know, we have in, a, a Pan-African institution that can not only introduce us to those countries, but also help us to work with them, communicate with them, uh, the work we are doing, but also recruits students from those countries. Because a sign of success of African School of Economics is if we have students coming from the, a very large number of African countries, you know, because the, you, know, the, you are going to learn so much when you are, you know, not only from Mexico or Pakistan, but let's say you are from Niger, and then your classmate is from Zambia, your classmate is from Sudan, your classmate is uh, from Tunisia, you know. So it's something unique about the very fact that people with different backgrounds, different experiences are all sharing uh, the same classroom. And, and then um, African Union is going to help us for that, you know. And I think this is really, really immense. And this is really, really, really important. And I can tell you for fact that uh, the leadership of... Uh, the African Union, um, you know, uh, and the staff of African, African Union uh, Development Agency has been really enthusiastic and supportive about what, um, you know, we are trying to do. So this is fantastic. And I think um, it's very encouraging for the future. Now, um, we also heard from, um, you know, the deans, you know, in Cote d'Ivoire, um, you know, the, the leadership in Nigeria and the leadership also in, um, in Benin. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, they, they told you, give you details about what, the, what kind of program we have and what people, students have been able to achieve. And um, this is, it's also, it shows you, you know, how, how far we have become, you know, like, because um, now, we are not just a small program in one African country. We have, you know, we have actual campus in several places. And, um, and I told you already that this is, this is just the beginning because we are opening up. Next time we are going to have uh, people from New York, people from Brazil participating, you know. So, I, I, and to, you know, and I, you know, I also, people who are not, have not been on the panel, like uh, the staff, you know, Mrs. Clementina or uh, Alamu, or, you know, Professor Da Cruz and, um, you know, the staff in Cote d'Ivoire, everyone who was not here, you know, I want to thank all of them for making, making this possible. And, you know, uh, particularly also Fatima, who has, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I should say Fatima one or Fatima two, but, Fatima, nonetheless, 
<laughs> yeah, Fatima, who, uh, you know, uh, the research manager at ASC, who put all these, helped put all this together and make um, this very fluid and very, very, uh, you know, smooth, you know. We'll have many more opportunities like this, so I'm, we are looking forward to it. But I will just end by just, and, you know, ask anyone to take this opportunity. You know, so this is massive. This is really, really massive, you know, because I mean, come on. We, when we say it's hard to find something of this caliber on the continent, <laughs> we may, we actually were quite modest, <laughs> you know? So, so please, uh, you know, take full advantage of what we are offering. This is for you, this is for Africa and, uh, Thank you very much for uh, your uh, attention and for your participation, and we will keep in touch. Thank you. Very Can I just much. say one thing before we go? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Arasi. It'll be great to be able to have access to uh, those uh, uh, people who were testifying today, the, the alumni. Yeah. Uh, for our, you know, open houses. It'll be great yeah. to have access to them. Thank absolutely. You. absolutely absolutely okay, great so fatima and julio we want to see more of you you know <laughs> <laughs> okay basiru i see you have your hand raised you want to say something quickly before we end yes i would like to, those who participated online uh, to leave the contact to us so we can uh, um, reach them and answer any question they may have later or any question they have that we do not answer fully yet. Over. Mm. Okay, that's very important. Ivana, your hand is raised. If your comment is a quick one, we can take it because we are about to end. So if you can ask your question very quickly so that we end. Ivana, one of the online participants. Ivana, are you there? Or you can write your you can write your question. Can write up your okay, question. she's here. Ivana, very quickly, please. Excuse We on Tantan, we. Okay. Okay. So. Ivana, Ivana, there are problems. Um, uh, you can write up in the chat your question. Problem. So we, yeah, write, write your question in the chat, yes, and somebody will respond. Um, open house. Um, Ivana, could you please mute your microphone? Yeah, so with that, we have come to the end of this virtual open house. I would like to thank everyone, the panelists, the alumni and the participants, both the virtual ones and the ones uh, that attended physically. Um, thank you. And like you have been told, you can reach out subsequently with any questions and comments that you may have. And we, uh, Ivana, could you please mute your microphone? Yeah. yeah, so please reach out subsequently with any questions you might have. Um, we have commenced recruitment for the next um, uh, academic session. So your questions and enjoy the remainder of your weekend. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.